Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Panic Attacking, the podcast about anxiety. I'm Andrew Chavone. And I'm Stephen Rogers. And we are joined by a very special guest. He, he has a podcast, Thought Spiral. He has several appearances on Letterman. He was a judge on Last Comic Standing. He's done it all. He's, he's Andy Kindler. Yeah, killer. So fun. We just recorded. Also, I, I got to mention his album that we, you and I both listened to today, Hence the, the Humor. Yeah. So funny. Andy was uh, nice enough to talk to us today and we covered such uh, things as recent loss and how it's being handled. We also talked about, we got a little Andy's background in, into uh, triggers, some tips to overcome your anxiety, including how to stay grounded and the treatment. And we talk about therapy. Yeah. And we got into, we have time to get into one listener topic because <laughs> we did talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. We- it gets crazy, but shout out to JWH who we uh, we get we get to your topic. I didn't get to shout her out in the episode. Yeah, and shout out to Ronnie who sent us one, but we we just couldn't get to it. But we'll get to it next week. Yeah, we'll get into them. The next live show is June twenty seventh. We've got Chloe Radcliffe and Joe List. It's going to be a killer show. Spread the word. DM us for the link. It's going to be great. Or email uh, panicattackpodcast at gmail dot com. Yes. And we're we're now on Patreon. You get four bonus episodes a month for for five bucks. So sign up yeah. at patreon.com. Uh rate, re- review, subscribe, share, all that, and you know, stay tuned for the music. Stay tuned. Starts beating really fast. I'm like sweating and trembling. Me too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die? Yeah. You guys look, you look familiar to me, but it could have been, I'm not, don't get, this is just a comment on how old I am. I am now (laughs) noticing if you two guys could look somewhat similar to people I knew 40 years ago (laughs) who were your age then. Right. Okay. So they can't be, it can't be. (laughs) Were they attractive? Well, (laughs) well, comics, as you know, comedians are never attractive. Right, See, I That's totally what... agree. <laughs> That's I mean, funny. if we were if we were attractive, seriously, we would be playing around on Zoom. Yeah, we'd be, we'd yeah. be making big bucks. Yeah, it would uh, be, and we'd be rock and rollers. Yeah. You know, oh my the... god! Yeah, I feel like we are just people that wanted to be rock and rollers and realized we couldn't. Yeah, that's the whole thing with comedians. But the thing is, is I was a musician. I was a failed musician, so. Right, oh. you were a gu- guitarist, right? Yeah, I was a guitarist. Oh, by the way, is it sound? Is it sounding okay? It is not. Yeah, you sound now. great. You're coming across I great. Don't know why would? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Perfect. So uh, I'll uh, I'll get us started, Andrew. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do okay, the intro, perfect. Andy, and we uh, mm-hmm. we usually talk about go, we go we ask you about your background with anxiety and neurosis. We ask you what makes you uncomfortable, um, and then we ask you what something specific that made you anxious this week. Oh, okay. Cool. And, and it's all ri- it's all riffing and tangents, so don't. Oh, don't no, that's yeah. I. Everything I, everything has to be scripted for me. <laughs> so did you get the you got the dailies? <laughs> so and so, I would like to say to you. Okay, no, I got it. All right, perfect. I'll I'll get started. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Panic Attacking, the podcast about anxiety. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm Andrew Chavone. This is, uh, we're super excited for this one because uh, with us we have the hilarious comedian Andy Kindler, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> and phew. Everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Should I be focusing on, I, I don't need to, first of all, how long, if you're a narcissist like me, how long yeah. till you stop looking at yourself on the screen, which means you're not looking into the camera? Is that the camera? <laughs> I've, I've am I gotta be honest. <laughs> am I right I, it, down the barrel now? Is that where you guys are? Yeah, yeah. I can, yeah, yeah. You look good. You can't, it's better. impossible I, not to look at yourself. I shouldn't worry about the zoom, though. Really, it shouldn't be about the zoom. I don't think. No, no. no. <laughs> they, it's about the experience. <laughs> you got it. 
<laughs> this is oh, a weird man. thing because do people normally see your podcast visually, or do they see, or do they listen to audio? Or I have a podcast, by the way, and I'll be plugging it every four minutes. <laughs> it's, it's called it's called Thought Spiral with Josh Elvis Weinstein. But oh. Andy, do you, have, do you have a comedy album? Yes. After at the age of sixty three, I released my first comedy album. Hence the humor. Love your album. We I listen, listen to, to it. it. Yeah. Get out of it. here. Do you know how long oh, it took me it. to put that out? That could be another whole uh, thing. It will be a thing. Yeah. We're never going to, this will never end. <laughs> and, and Josh Elvis Weinstein, it's hilarious. I, I uh, used to watch him on Mystery Science Theater, and then I know now he does stand up. You weren't even born. I'm going to do this another, another 40 minutes of how old I am and how young you are. Because the reason why I've been into this new bit is the industry loves it. They love yeah. me to talk on and on about how old I am. And uh, that I feel that I describe myself as shambling. No, Gary shambling. What, is that? I don't know what that word means. I think it's like you kind of like... Sh- you should like shambling. <laughs> well, you, you can be in shambles. So it's the act of That's being in is. shambles. Yeah. That's, oh yeah. my God. No wonder there's a lot of uh, neuroses. There's a lot of <laughs> so we're smart, smart Jews. But you know, I don't know why do I assume no one's a Jew, a Jew except me. I'm the only Jew on the phone, right? You're, you're the only Jew in the Zoom right now. Oh, I, okay, white supremacist. <laughs> oh. But. Uh, <laughs> Thank we you, Mr. In... Boogal- Mr. Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Oh, but we live in Queens. We can't be white supremacists in Queens. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Now, do you know that I'm from your area? We're in Queens. I was born in, uh, I grew up in Whitestone, and I went to Bayside High School, and I went to oh, 194 oh, and 193. Yeah, that's uh... Bell, Bell Boulevard, right? Yes, Bell Bell Boulevard is very close. I I took violin lessons on Bell Boulevard. (laughs) It should uh... should be a joke. I can't even make that funny. (laughs) I can't even make talking about playing the violin funny. (laughs) I I mean, I I laughed. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Don't make me do my forced perspective. I'll do it. (laughs) Whoa, dude, I'm freaking out. I'm coming after you assholes. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to curse. No curse. I like how the rest of your body doesn't move when you run. <laughs> are, are you punching Come us? Come back here. Come back here. <laughs> I can, I'm can. i not even breathing heavily. Come back here. Oh, God. That, oh, that's man. no one. So my question was, are most people listening audioly or are they listening oh. uh, uh, visually? Most... They're audio, so they loved that last bit you just did. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so is the Zoom not even going to be used, or it is used? People can what? go no, online. They will, they will see uh, the video, but most people uh, will have audio. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what does that mean? Thank you. And bad, oh, you're your, that, your witness. Andy, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, this this uh, Zoom is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, we're Astoria boys. Oh, you're so Astoria! Wow. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so you so you guys do you both st- you're both stand ups right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but so you don't know, you guys don't know from Jimmy's Comedy Alley. When I started, there was a bowling alley in Bayside that I never played because I didn't uh, do comedy until I came out to Los Angeles. And then I would go back oh, to man. New York and bomb. But that's when they were horrible. <laughs> All the clubs were pretty horrible. You are well, you are so lucky. I, you are so lucky to be. You got Trump. You got Trump. You got the quarantine. <laughs> and you've got well, the greatest. Can't. And you, uh, uh, if you people, if you could go and be around other people, what a great atmosphere to this time period. Would yeah. Be. <laughs> if you could see other people. Yeah. It'd be such a. Right. It'd be such a seminal period. <laughs> If it was, if it was legal what a time together. to be in the be in the beginning of our careers. <laughs> yes, I, I envy you. I envy you as the last generation on Earth. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> oh my God. No, but the comedy's wow. comedy's no. great. A uh, comedy seat, crowds are way better now than they ever were. That's my opinion in general. Yeah, like I because they're not the they're not at a bowling alley in New York. <laughs> That's. 
<laughs> That's the first a little move easier. I would have made. It's a little, yeah, it's a little easier when the pins aren't being knocked down when you talk. Yeah, yeah, so. true. Um, it's nice to, when the club, the audience members can wear their own shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah, and that that's the that's the only thing. If it kept open a little bit longer, it would have been closed by the quarantine, probably. It wouldn't have been. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think bowling is phase one. <laughs> <laughs> bowling is the worst idea. Bowling is terrible when it's safe. Your hand, <laughs> when it break your hand after the first game, it's yeah. the most germ-filled uh, yeah. Yeah. activity you can have. I, I, I used to spit inside the bowling ball for luck. <laughs> and it's only finger foods. It's only finger foods. <laughs> yeah. Hamburger, Three times. and then <laughs> each hole in the ball. Yeah, I would lick my, I lick my hand, use the dryer, oh my, my hand all licked up. My God. Wait, didn't they, they, they called you Slick Fingers Kindler? <laughs> they called me Slick, Slick Fingers, da and they also Dampy, Dampy was my nickname. Oh. Dampy. That's always good yeah. to be associated with being moist. That's really yeah, moist, yeah, that's right. Dampy, Crowd pleaser. Jay, moist. Dampy J. Moistman was my stage name <laughs> for many, many years. <laughs> Dan the host hated shaking your hand. <laughs> yes. We, yeah. I, they, I used to do, they say, stop doing the broadcast news bit. I don't know if that, is that too old a reference? The broadcast really news. No, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, it's well, it's relevant. the sweating, Albert Brooks sweating in broadcast news. Oh, man. So he sweated, yeah. so they're telling me, don't do the Albert Brooks bit. And I say, I'm not <laughs> doing a bit. <laughs> Zoom. My gosh. Zoom. Oh, you're zooming oh, in the Zoom. Oh, my God. I do my own Zoom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Um, and the bowling balls, the, the holes, how do you clean those? You need, like, a plumber's tool. <laughs> they, they have the last pandemic how... in the ball. <laughs> It does sound like an '80s bit, though, doesn't it? Who uh, yeah, plays those bowling? Who What's plays those deal? bowling balls? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely you should not. That's one sport you should not have your own ball. You should you should shop around, stick yeah. your fingers, stick your fingers, yeah. and you want to stick your fingers also in the crevices around where the ball was kept. Right. You know? Why? Why stop at the ball? <laughs> yeah, my favorite bowling ball. Was where the, was always propped up with an empty malted milk ball container. My favorite <laughs> Great. one. Oh my god, I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> and you're sitting right next to the people at the bowling alley, right? The bowling alley, you're sitting. Yeah. Yeah. It's closer than than the uh, airplane seats, right? The, the, the yeah. bowling alley. You're like this yeah, next to the person. <laughs> Next to you. Look, I'm, an old, I'm an old style physical comedian. Very good. You're like sitting on a, a mechanic's lap. How's your game going? <laughs> a mechanic's lap. Hey, look, to... I've been doing this league bowling since I was 19 years old. Are you fucking telling me that we're going to lock it down? We have to bowl. We have to bowl whether we want to or not. We have to bowl yeah. even if there are sick, dying people in the lanes. <laughs> Bowling's, <laughs> bowling leagues are essential workers. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're opening up anyway. Here we come, ready or not. <laughs> the, the, the sick people are become the pins? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> he just knocked them over. Oh, um, man. It's a hoax. It's a hoax as the four, third, as a two... The second billion of two billion people die. Trump will be saying yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's very exaggerated. But you know what, guys? We don't need this kind of nervousness on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So do you do you have a a long history of anxiety, Andy? Like when did you know that you had it? Well, mine. Mine, in a lot of ways, is a very sad story because, well, not that sad. I mean, well, it's not sad at all. Okay, let's, uh, I'll, let me repitch it. Let me give you the elevator pitch. Let me give okay, you the please. elevator pitch of my anxiety. Okay, please. I'll give you the elevator pitch. Uh, no, I won't do that. Uh, I, I'm anxious. I'm anxious. I don't think these doors are going to open. Uh, so, 
hey, hey, hey. I have a fear of elevators. I have a fear of elevators. I have a fear of enclosed spaces. That's the pitch. <laughs> What's the I'm weight writing, max? And I'm writing this down because I, I, I refuse to listen back to anything that I've ever been on. <laughs> I have a fear of. You'll tell me later what that was. Okay. Close yeah, your, eleva- your, your elevator pitch. You're afraid of elevators. I don't like sliding doors. <laughs> sliding doors. My, my father was killed by a sliding door. My, my father was killed in a six by six room. It wasn't an elevator. I got to get out of here. <laughs> I got to get out of here. My mother yelled at me in elevators. She used to take me to the elevator to scold me. I, the, oh. sad story is, the sad story is I didn't realize until I was out in Los, I grew up in, in New York and I moved mm-hmm. out to LA. That's a whole long story. Well, it's fascinating. And I went to LA and and I hadn't uh, and I didn't uh, drive much in New York because I grew mm-hmm. up in Queens. I got my license, but I went I, I went to uh, uh, the state. I don't want to brag, but I went to the State University of New York at Binghamton. <laughs> oh my goodness! Hey, I'm a Sy- I'm from Syracuse. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love the whole the whole thing. <laughs> Shut up, Andy. <laughs> Just this is the voice inside me. Where's the anxiety come from? This is a guy in front of me right now. Shut up, Andy. Shut up. Andy, you don't even have a good Wi-Fi system. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. They're trying to talk to you. They're, they have new careers. They're looking forward to their life. And, and then you go on and on. Just <laughs> shut up. Why don't you listen to the question first, Andy, and then answer it. <laughs> Maybe that would help. So when I moved oh, out man. to L.A., I started to drive. And um, I thought, well, there's two things. I thought when I had, was driving that I may have hit something in the car. So, Mm -hmm. uh, and this is 1979. So this is when OCD wasn't that, it was around, but they didn't have, you know, people, it wasn't as much diagnosed. So so I actually would, like I would, drive i i would you know i do i do i i I turned it into comedy gold no but i uh i would drive and i go did i just hit did i just hit a a pebble or (laughs) did i hit could that have been the leg of a person could that have been a tiny pebble person i've hit i should probably go around the block let me go around (laughs) the block oh they're, they're not here Probably because they crawled off into the bushes. <laughs> let me right. go look in the bushes. Let me go look. In the bushes. Let me. And when I get home, let me call the police and say, first of all, are there pebble people? And if so, have any of them been hit on the street? So I didn't know what that was. I thought I was absolutely crazy. Uh, that was OCD. Right. Now there are people who people who think that they've mailed somebody in an envelope. It, it, oh. can, it can be that. It can be that unrealistic. Wow. In, wow. in my case, it was pretty unrealistic, but it was still realistic enough to have me worried for hours. Right. And until I, but here's the thing: until I went into therapy at age fifty nine. I hope you can. Can you fix this audio? And when I say fifty nine, you bump it down to twenty nine, or you jump it down yeah, to thirty nine. At the age of twenty six. Yeah. Do you have a seniors? Do you have a seniors audience, or is it all the same people? All right, so. Oh, uh, <laughs> We have the we, senior we, store. We have your demographic. <laughs> yeah, we got the demographic. Uh, what was I just saying? See, that's another thing. Anxiety therapy. Okay, you went to therapy. Fifty nine. Yeah, I uh, right, and I have uh, so fifty nine. It was the oldest 26. Jew to enter therapy because my I just never. It's a whole long story. I felt like I was a spiritual person. I felt like I was a person who thought about myself a lot, but I never understood that. I had anxiety my entire life, entire right, right. life, and yeah, never took... interpreted as anxiety. And because my uh, my you know because, because I was a because you know I'm reading this book called Mindsight, which is about how you know like an early childhood. If you 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 know like if your parent, my mom died. Okay, so we can talk about her now, right? Yeah. Okay, you guys sure. didn't have anything to do with you guys didn't have anything to do with it, did you? <laughs> I was worried that you're going to start pointing fingers. That's well, I, know. I, uh, I did nothing. Some, I, I, I did thought I hit somebody with my car. So, 
<laughs> there's no better icebreaker. There's no better icebreaker than saying, now you know my mother's dead. Right? Okay, look. Yeah, that's a good my way mother, to open up. There's going to be, we may not have enough time to get any of the real, of all the issues in, but you guys <laughs> asked for it. You guys asked Is that for what, it. That's okay. what your therapist says, right? That's what my therapist says. <laughs> she, that's why I have two, two sessions a week. Two sessions a week. But um, wow. my mother and sister both died in March, 10 days from each other. Oh my goodness. 10 day window. My mother was 90. My sister was almost 69. They both had been ill. My mother had Parkinson's. My sister had been sick for her entire life, but it was still obviously a, uh, a shock. Right. right. But the worst part is that I have to say, I lost two of my family members in March, not related to COVID. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh my God! So, this was a couple months ago. A couple months ago. This not related oh to goodness. COVID. Was it related? To, so you have to go. Another, you have to talk. You have to talk another two minutes to get past. Right. You right, can't even. Right. I can't even have the tragedy be my own. I have to right. share it with you, COVID people. <laughs> so, in fact, my mom, my my sister knew she was going to go. Uh, mm-hmm. She had been sick for years, and she really had a wonderful life, and she knew she was going to go. And I flew back to L.A. on March 10th from New York, and she died on March 11th. Oh, my God. And, wow. the, and then my, sis, my mom died 10 days later. I had come back east just as they were talking about the quarantine, but they had, weren't talking. You know, they, it happened so quick because I knew my sister, my sister really wanted uh, my brother and I to see her before mm-hmm. one more time and she was just a brilliant person you know she was a person who bought all these like hospice books and all the books about dying because she kind of knew for a couple of years that she couldn't have any more operations and things so right. she kind of hung on for me to go to new york and then my mom who was should have passed a couple of months ago because of the parkinson's then she passed 10 days later you know and then my brother yes. had to tell my mother my brother had to tell my mother about it but the point I'm making is my mother is clearly dead and cannot hear this podcast is what I'm trying to say to you people. Our, okay. Yeah. I want you to get, get over. Them. I want you to get over her death very quickly. No. Uh, so I can really feel free to talk about her, which I never was of feel free, to, free about. Please feel free. All right. First of all, I will now give you guys time to uh, extend your condolences. I, I so was sorry, Andy. It, now, <laughs> I was going to do it, but now it seems insincere. Yeah. <laughs> My condolences, Andy. Yeah. Condolences. You heard, and you heard that there were two family members, right? You heard yeah. that, oh, right? Thank two you. Two times condolences. And condolences of, uh, about the time frame, too, that they Yeah, that's 10 days. Yeah. Awful. And, and during awful. Corona of not Corona. Yeah, because yeah, we, we were the first people. Not the first people. We, we couldn't go to the funeral. I mean, I wasn't right. in the city, but nobody right. could go because there were all, all of the relatives were old. Oh man! But yeah. but the thing is, I didn't mean to bring you guys down, but I have more. No, I don't have more. <laughs> <laughs> I I am suffering from paralysis that occurred <laughs> as this podcast started. I started to feel my left side. Oh, oh I thought I thought that was a bad connection. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Hey, don't. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know you were really frozen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about my. Let's talk about. Okay, my mom, and mm. I again. When even when she was alive, because I was talking. I on the podcast. I don't know. Did I mention the name of the podcast? Yours or ours? My, uh, mine. Yes. What's it called? Sp- spiral. <laughs> uh, da- so it's spiral. That's right. Thought spiral. So that's spiral. <laughs> I'll write that down. Uh, hence the uh, humor. Uh, by hence the way. Hum- Right. Uh, so, uh, what was I talking about? So, he, now, right now, when I get when I lose my place, that's all anxiety, and I never knew that that was an anxiety. I can, uh, as soon as I'm telling this story, whatever I was saying to you, I lose where I was. I start to panic in that moment. It's not wow. like a serious. It's not a serious panic because right, I don't. Right, I, right. I, I don't. I only had a few panic attacks in my life, and it, okay. and, and it hasn't. It's been a long time. Thank God, even with the recent stuff, I didn't. Oh, I'm lying. I did get a panic. I'm such a liar. I've been vomiting for the last year and a half. Oh my God. <laughs> you know why we get very my nervous stomach? Why do I make up stuff? What's the point? Who am I trying to? What am I trying to prove? Look, you know what? I don't get any panic now that my family members are dying. Uh, that doesn't. Bu- 
That's not what bothers me. It's when they were alive that bothers me. <laughs> now, here's the thing. They, I used to say that my mother was not going to listen to the podcast as a joke. This was a couple of months ago when she was still alive. Right. But now right. I can feel free that she really is not going to listen to the podcast. And my, mo my mother is not a monster, so stop saying that. My mother... <laughs> My, I love my I love my mother. I love my mother as an adult. I was the youngest. All right, and, you've convinced me. Uh, good. <laughs> but um my mother was very depressed when when we were kids and she uh was in therapy like in her mid 20s, but before she got into therapy, she it's a whole long story, but she was like really badly depressed and we did obviously we were kids, we didn't know what was happening. So that book Mindsight talks about you don't get in early, and my therapist talks about this too, in early childhood, you don't get the cues, the positive cues from mm -hmm. your uh, initial caregiver. Right. If you start reflecting back what they're reflecting back, uh, yep. that's how I got a feeling of abandonment. Well, other things too, but a terrible feeling of abandonment. And also, uh, I, don't, I didn't like my, I didn't realize how much I kind of hated myself until I got to therapy. I completely relate. Now, can you tell me you, your story or have you guys told your story so many times that everyone has heard it? I don't think we've told our early stories, actually. I mean, like, I, I personally relate. My mom has uh, multiple sclerosis, and she's had it my whole life. Uh, so I kind of would always worry about people's comfort levels. Right, uh, right. Because I was always always worried about hers. And uh, so that's been a big thing with me. And I... I just started going to therapy. Andrew and I go to the same uh, therapist. Yeah, we started a year ago at the same time. Stephen went yeah, first, yeah. And, he, and he's like, he's like, it's doing wonders. So, and we yeah. both have the same neuroses and, and anxiety stuff. Yeah. What are your neuroses? Uh, what are your neuroses? Is it? Is, you sound like you have a similar. But was your mother loving when you were? As oh a yeah, mother. She she's still uh, great and always was, but I was always conscious to the fact that uh she you know wasn't as comfortable as she could be and i think that always bothered me someone that i love not comfortable like yeah uh, that was did you think you problem. were responsible for her well-being because that that's what uh, i had it to the point where i thought i was causing everything my mother's mood any problems oh. were all caused by me i i have that now for sure i don't know if i have it with my parents, but everyone else in my life, for sure. Your mom and dad yeah. still together? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, were, were your parents, MS Andy? Is, uh, oh, yeah, my parents, my dad, uh, my dad died in uh, January of uh, 2015. Mm. Too soon? <laughs> That's how my family reacted. <laughs> Too soon? That's what my mother said. That's from my act, guys. Sorry, that's from my act. <laughs> Here's I'll take my it. favorite a... joke, which I don't Please. think you guys are going to get because it's an old, based on an old joke. But here's my new Let's favorite joke. At my father's funeral, my mother turned to me and she said, Andy, I have to, but you? <laughs> okay. It's based on an old joke where a guy comes home, he catches his best friend in bed with his wife. And he says, he says, Harry. I have to, but you? <laughs> I, I turn it. that around and I put it into the setting of a funeral for my father. It couldn't be more inappropriate. And then I did a whole bit about how when people would get uncomfortable, I'd say, let me just tell you something. My father would have wanted me to do weak material about his passing. <laughs> but before, nothing would have made him more proud. He took me aside right before he died. He said, Andy, when this is all over, I hope you turn it into another one of your bits that goes nowhere. <laughs> hey put that on my tombstone <laughs> I, I, oh, but you know what's God. amazing like i i never thought i would get this kind of thing from being a comedian but i got like probably a few people came up to me after shows when i did that but i haven't talked about my mom i haven't been out of the house since my mom and sister right but they really you get people who i think felt bad that they could laugh you know, or that they were laughing because I think everyone right. does laugh. It's almost a cliche all the time. Say. Yeah, but all, but, yeah. but made them. I think made them feel. It's like it's very hard for me now to allow myself 
to have whatever emotion I'm having in life mm -hmm. in general. And one of my first instincts is to make jokes. So yep, uh, we're the same way. Yeah, so the, it's a, and, and my so first that's a real to that's laugh. a real gift. It's a real gift, I think. Yeah, I don't want to say it, gift like an old Jew comic, but it's a gift. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a real gift. I mean, it's 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 a cliche to say it, but that no, we know is you kind mean. of what yeah. the point of yeah. comedy is. But that's it, the it, kind of point. It of works. Comedy. It doesn't. Everyone work. has you, everyone has their own way to mourn and to process things. I mean, all the three of us process it with jokes, which I think is is entertaining. I yeah. think us. that's why, like, when the first anything bad happens to me personally, I immediately want to find comics. So I can start making jokes about it because everyone else doesn't know how to react. Yes, but comics get it, and they'll do it too, and it's so therapeutic. Well, I think that you know, I'm a, I consider myself a spiritual person. I consider laughter very. I mean, again, I don't want to sound like uh, Tony Robbins or even his brother Eddie Robbins. <laughs> oh, I love Eddie. He's such an he asshole. Works, no, he uh, works at the Orange Julius. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't work. He just tells everyone else that they can do it. Yeah, <laughs> they, he makes them make the Julius. <laughs> yeah, I used to do this joke. I I, I can't stop doing this joke for, with various other locations. I go, yeah, I went to went down to Johnny Rockets today, and of course Johnny Rockets was down there bragging. <laughs> <laughs> I have 55 hamburger places. Oh, I'm doing very well. <laughs> there are several yeah, you, establishments that have that kind of, that you could do that with. They oh, have that man. name to the restaurant. I love, I love your extended stay bit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's, not on, it's not on the album, folks. Maybe it is on the album. I think I it is. I haven't listened to the album in a while. Oh, but so I funny. was very. I just want to say one thing about the album because it's not important. But I'm very happy with the album because I, I and I listened to it. I edited it. I edited. It, you know, I'm not usually. I usually want to brag, but then I stop. But in this case, mm -hmm. I'll just say I did edit it all myself, and I listened back to it after a few years because that's a whole long story. OCD. You can't complete projects. Right. Do either of you guys have OCD? I Andrew, you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I always think it's never good enough. Even that, that's with a post on Instagram, like just a picture of myself. I'm like, yeah. oh, I could redo this. Like, it'll take me, take me a day to post something. What was, uh, can you got, can you say what was the immediate reason? Because you started therapy recently, but you guys are young, so it makes more sense. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what were you guys going for a, approximately the same reasons for help? Uh, I'd say... I think it's a little bit similar. Yeah, me, me and you went through a breakup around the same time, and we yeah. were going through the same. Not with each other, but yeah, uh, yeah, our our relationship's going strong. But yeah, we both went through a breakup around the same time, and uh, and I moved to New York like a couple of years prior, and was still I, I never lived anywhere else, so I was a little bit of adjustment. And we, how old we, are you guys? I'm 34. No, and uh, I'm I'm 28. That's unbelievable. This is like we were uh, meant to me uh, uh, meet because uh, I started comedy at 28. Wow. So man, uh, I feel like if I had any message, and I don't know if this resonates with either one of you, if I could have one, piece, like if rub rub Please. the genie or the lamp or whatever it is, <laughs> one piece of advice that I wish I could have taken was to get off my own back and be nice to myself. Wow. And, to, and, and I mean that for comedy. For, yeah. Uh, I went through, as an OCD person, I went through one solid year on stage. And this is before I was diagnosed. I didn't know what it was. I would say, I am holding the mic in the right hand. Now I am looking to the left side. How could I be yes. funny if I'm able to talk to myself? While I'm right. doing the comedy, and I, <laughs> right. I thought I would never like, like I knew that I was fun. I mean, everybody in my family was funny, but I didn't, uh, but I didn't believe I could be funny on stage a lot, a lot of the time because I also I wasn't very funny on stage at the time when I started. You know, what I mean, I was like really green. Yeah. I was really green. Yeah, I hadn't uh, everyone seen, is. And the, Everyone is. Everyone is. So, yeah. and, and, and in fact, 
uh, I shouldn't even compare myself because it's all, I think when you start, it's always somewhat the same depending on who you're starting with and all that kind of thing. But I was so hard on myself, so mean to myself. Yeah, us yeah, too. I mean, we're both like, I think Andrew and I are both seven years in. And like, even now, if I get, like when I was getting off stage and somebody would compliment me, I would notice I would physically go, like this, like, uh, ah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would always dismiss it. I would dismiss swamming. it every time. Every time. <laughs> I'm I mean, my, like, the worst critic is is an expression, but I that advice couldn't have resonated more. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's so funny you went like this because we're, we're are we all from Queens? Uh, I'm from Syracuse, but, and you're... I'm from Virginia. But, oh, okay. Because yeah, I, yeah. there's a thing called the Queens Wave. Okay, and this has actually happened to me. It's called the Queen's Wave. On Thanksgiving morning, I went for a jog many, many years ago yeah. uh, when I was staying with my parents. And I came around a corner and there was a guy like dressed up very nice for Thanksgiving Day in a suit or whatever he was. He was in a car and he sees me. He thinks I'm going to be his son, you know, coming out to go to the yeah. event. Oh, So he goes like this. And then he sees it's not his son. And he goes, eh. He, <laughs> he waves me off on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, <laughs> the ability to show your visual displeasure in this <laughs> is so. I mean, like, uh, what's that club uh, out in U uh, Union Hall? Yeah, in yeah, Brooklyn. New this is not a cliche about New Yorkers. I was walking there when I did the club last, and this guy. I see him, he knocks into a, a bush. Some guy, it's like in the middle of winter. I go, oh, are you okay? He goes, yeah, what the hell is the deal with these bushes? You know, I can't even look. <laughs> I try and go to my car. I go, what the thing is? I call the city and it's like, what's the point? I couldn't believe it. It was so, it was like seeing inside myself. Yeah, that's why are it's fun okay, to go to. Are you okay, sir? <laughs> <laughs> that's Sorry. why it's fun to go to, to, go to Mets games because they all do the wave at once. And <laughs> yeah, you know, that can that can knock a ball out of the field. <laughs> oh. Simultaneous wave. Oh, um, that's hilarious. My, my first time in oh. New York, I missed I missed the bus, and it was right the bus stop was right outside of some New York guy's house, and I was like <laughs> cursing, c cursing at myself, and he said, "Don't worry, sweetheart, there'll be another one." <laughs> uh, uh, I'm like, all right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that reminds me of growing up because, like, when I was growing up, uh, I ha I would have to take a forty-five minute bus to get to Flushing, New York, and yeah. then I would have to take a subway, the number seven subway, to go into New York. That would be another forty-five minutes to an hour. So even though as the crow flies, it's short. Why did I say as the crow flies? <laughs> I really, it's time. Forget about what I said about being hard on yourself. I think I should have been harder on myself. <laughs> oh, no, that's a long commute. Hey, that... <laughs> what am I, Copernicus? Who am I, I Magellan? What am I? <laughs> what am I, a historical reference? <laughs> Where am I? Where am I at the geographical location? Actually, I'm doing that. I'm doing James Adomian doing his impression of me. <laughs> he does an impression because I was staying at the Westin. Because there was no more room at the, no more room at the Easton. What, 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 what's the matter? You people don't like my Cardinal's direction humor. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, oh, stop man. me! Someone oh, we, stop me! We we love the historical references. Are, are you saying, Andy, <laughs> yes, that that's right. all I have? That's all I have. Are Are you saying, Andy, it took a while for you to commute to New York City from from Whitestone? Is that that <laughs> was the that was unbelievable. Now they have express buses. Oh Man. yeah, but they're yeah, more expensive. It's, they're they're like seven bucks. It's crazy. <laughs> it is literally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, though, but I no. You can you imagine? My I grew up in my house. We moved in in 1959, mm -hmm. and uh, my parents paid thirty thousand dollars for that house. Oh and my now god! Now we're trying to sell it. And my whole life, I was like, oh, my God, I know I'm going to get this house and it's going to be worth over a million dollars. Just you guys wait and see. <laughs> but what I didn't realize was that my mother would be very ill. And my mother, she's selfish. I got to use the reverse. I've got to use the mortgage money now 
for nurses and all this kind of nonsense. Oh, so no. right now, I'm going to break even or lose money on the house. What's the point of having parents leave you something? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really weird because I I'm I really am now alone. I mean, I've never been in this position my whole life where I didn't have. Right. Uh, I, my brother's alive, and that's very cool. But I mean, until last Thanksgiving, I would go back there every single year. Wow. So, so I mean, that really is. Yeah. A, I, I would imagine, and then I couldn't go back in. None of could go. I couldn't go back in once I got back here, because right, uh, right, right. Yeah, the quarantine. So, right, and good the, guess, uh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what'd you say, oh, Steven? You guys, I like this. This is what I. This is what we try to have on on my podcast, where we get to get the old digs in there, get the oh, digs we love in the digs. partner. <laughs> oh, we we uh, we're like uh, brothers digging yeah. at each other all the time. Yeah, it's, it's I love if it. we're if we're not digging, we're bickering. So yeah, <laughs> we bicker like an old married couple <laughs> constantly. Hey, you know you know what's nice about this is that you guys. There's not going to be a. It's going to be very hard to top this interview in terms of the if you go like look we judge the interviews by how many problems the person has coming in right, <laughs> right. did this person have anxiety maybe they did losing two family <laughs> members in 10 days yes perhaps that was a little bit disturbing mm -hmm. yeah you definitely blow out our our problems <laughs> because i was yeah. complaining yeah. about talk to the, was, talk to the hand about your problems. yeah <laughs> I, I was i was going to complain about trying to find an apartment and uh <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yeah, well, I, sadly, I breakups can be that bad, though. I mean, uh, I ma right. I'm happily married, uh, as far as uh, my wife knows. No, uh, I. What do I say? <laughs> things like that. But my, thank God. And when I, I will say this, and I think it's important to get to this because uh, because it's about anxiety. I hit rock bottom in my life. A few that got me into therapy was I became out of control on social media like Twitter and things like that. Oh. I couldn't get off of Twitter. I couldn't stop having oh, fights wow. on Twitter. And if you have any obsessive compulsive tendencies, Twitter is like a horrible trap because yes. uh, a lot of OCD and it goes and you know, I'm on Prozac and thank God I am and I'm not saying everybody has to be, but in my family it goes back on my mother's side all the way. I mean, like we can't remember when they didn't have OCD. Like my uh, my cousin, who sadly committed suicide, she had it so bad she actually did call the police department to see if somebody had reported somebody hitting hitting somebody. Wow! So, wow. so yeah. So and and that was in nineteen. 80 so she so she had it worse than me in many ways well obviously she commits yeah if someone commits yeah. suicide it is worse than me thank you everybody <laughs> and don't and i don't want any letters from you people saying i'm trivializing anything and i don't want any negative feedback from anything i say <laughs> oh i think people get uh, it <laughs> and anything i say in the future i apologize for now if there's a problem uh, <laughs> I mean, these are your relatives, so I don't think people are going to be offended by you making. Yeah, fun of yeah. I want to. I want to say condolences again for all yeah. the, the well, thank other members. Yeah, yeah, and and the thing is, uh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say about the OCD, the panic. What was I saying about the Twitter? Panic? Rock what? bottom Twitter. Oh, okay. So yeah, because it's fight. It, OCD is fight, flight, or freeze. So. And also mm. with abandonment issues and PTSD and stuff like that, it's fight, flight, or freeze. So you, uh, so, and then in Twitter, the worst part is that you have an area where you can check, you can keep checking to see what people are saying about you. That right. is the, that's the, that's the catch. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. And so that, so, and the, and the hard thing has been is that I'm, I'm not taking myself off. So, so I had to make a, a change where I'm in a profession where I need social media. So yeah. I've really, it's been the hardest thing I've had to do, but I've come a tremendous way with it. I used to get mad and argue with people, you know, like I would get so angry when people were like were mean atheists or they were Islamophobic and I would just get into these. And this is another thing about therapy that's so good is I realized I was arguing that these arguments were turning into replaying things with my dad because i love my dad my dad was hilarious he was so right. funny but he was very bright and he kind of made me feel stupid sometimes when we would oh, argue mm. 
not not on, even on purpose. So all of a sudden, in the middle of these arguments, like I had to realize, oh no, this isn't about you and this person that you don't know who's a stranger. This is about you and your dad. So it's been really, really like horrible and great and learning. You know, it's been amazing. Uh, That's I, fantastic. It's That's been good. I, almost four years. Almost this, wow. this this December will be four years I've been in therapy. Man, and, you do, and you're doing it twice a week, so that's like eight. Mm -hmm. And it's <laughs> and it's, and it's been covered by insurance. I can't even believe oh, it. Screen uh, Actors Guild, shout out to them. And and I know people at home who are struggling right now. All they want to hear is that I get all of my sessions covered. I mean, <laughs> do, that was, do that I was our follow up. Feed, do I have to feed into a Jewish stereotype? Can I at least let <laughs> a minute go by and get that without fellas affordable? Well, oh. well, the uh, Screen Actors Guild is uh, at, yeah. like you're a listener, so uh, <laughs> they'll be I, glad that you... I believe in, I do believe like the, I, I believe like when things happen, like, not that they always happen for a reason and all this kind of, you know, and I don't believe in these things like you create your own reality. Oh, then why would the Jews want to put themselves in concentration camps, right? So it's like, I don't right. believe in that, in that, uh, that concept, but I don't even know why I started that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I don't. I, is that an argument people make that they wanted to go into them? No, no. It's like when Oprah. I like Oprah, but she's had some bad movements. She had that the secret, the secret. Yeah, yeah. She yeah, was yeah. like yeah. visualize yeah. it. You want out, right? And it's it's really. I mean, it's a misapprehension of Eastern philosophies. It's like yeah, you know, it's like you create your own reality in the same sense that everybody is create is is feeding into this reality. So right. the fact that I, you know, like I love this philosopher Alan Watts, and he was a, uh, he uh, was a, he explained Eastern thoughts for Western people. So he used to say, karma, if you translate it, means you do it, you do mm -hmm. it. So in other words, it's not like if I punch one guy in the face, I'm going to get punched back in the face one time. It's the actual being in that mode, is the karma. You're creating, right. you're in your own bad mood. Not that it's going to wow. be predictive of what's going to happen. And that happens with a lot of those Eastern philosophies because they're trying to tell you that, yes, you like, that's what I've learned from therapy is like, and the quarantine too, is like, I can think, I have a fundamental thought that I'm doomed. I, not anymore. I'm coming out of it, but I'm doomed. It was my fault. I would wake up in the morning and I'd say, it's already too late. You already fucked up. And oh uh, I, I'm sorry about the cursing because I don't usually curse. Does it matter? No, it's no, fine. You're fine. Oh, okay. um, I wake up in the morning. and the, but the, So what I've realized is none of those, it's like I'd worry about money my whole life. And I realize I don't, I'm not worried about it anymore like I used to be. That doesn't mean I won't ever get worried about it. But I feel like I'm over the hump of realizing that the fear is what it's the it's the it's the thought that i'm not uh, i'm not a per you know i'm not a good person i've done something wrong i've right. i've caused my own problem i don't deserve whatever right. success or whatever the thing and it really is the quarantine has been good for that because it allows you to be alone with your thoughts where you actually go i can see myself going down these so i can avoid rabbit holes not every rabbit yes. hole but i can avoid right. some of them that's right. Good. You can notice your triggers. Yeah, yeah. Can, that's an amazing thing. That's a. What kind of therapy are you in? Is it like a, th a type? Like I'm in almost like analysis. I mean, she's not like Freud, but it's a tradition of that kind of school where you, you she's trying to bring it all out of me. I think that's what we yeah. are in as well. We talk because most it's, of the it's time. It's a lot of. Yeah, it's a lot of us. At least my experience finding it, and she's just like uh, letting me find the answers myself and a lot of times uh i've been going through this how come i can't see both you guys this is the worst thing in the world uh, are you on your phone you have, guys are you on your you phone just view? swipe swipe over if you're on your phone oh my god swipe I the video believe, this is such so typical of me i thought that you just didn't want to be seen <laughs> swipe, i thought that just, no you know what? Swipe i swipe the video when they would switch the cameras when they'd switch the cameras right right yeah okay yeah <laughs> Did you, see, you know what? Did you, no, I'm not that happy. Did you see I'm not that happy seeing you. <laughs> anyway, what were we? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, th this is so much better. Look at this. 
Yeah. Oh, look at... We're mishpacha now. Mishpacha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I recognize that. <laughs> Uh, I forgot where we were, but uh, I was asking uh, about your therapy. That's right. Yeah. Our, uh, at least my experience with our therapist is uh, I I bring in the the issue. It's all, she'll ask the questions, and to, to, it's like together we un, unwrap it together. I'm doing maybe just as much work. I, I, I will give her a problem, and then I'll ask, well, what do you think about that? And then she'll give me her opinion, and I'll be like, I don't think that's right. And then that's, that's mainly our, my, my sessions. <laughs> She's a sounding board then. She's a sounding yeah. board. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, a lot of my therapy has been uh, – I'm sorry. I'm, my, uh, my, I was very influenced by Yahoo Sirius. Yahoo Sirius. Is that a reference still? Yeah. Come on, guys. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> Are you going I, out on the town after this? <laughs> Yahoo Serious. Isn't he a, um, an Israeli rapper? No. Or, Yahoo Serious was a comedian from the old days. Oh, my God. Oh. You, now you can tell me you don't know who Carrot Top is. I know uh -huh. who Carrot Top is. Come on. Yeah. Car Did you have to, Yahoo you, you Serious had... was, was Carrot Top before there was a... Was ah. Like he, he, he was Sprout Top. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't he, believe... He started the... He started the silly name He's... trend. Well, no, I think Carrot Top would be more starting the pro uh, the silly props trend. We well, didn't start it. Yeah. But he, he certainly yeah. perfected it. Um, <laughs> I was going to say that, yeah, a lot of my therapy is me realizing that because this is one of my big problems, so it might not happen for you guys, but like I'm constantly want her to tell me I'm a good person, and see, I've mm. we've just we've we've really explored that. So if, if I'm, if I don't like, there's times when like, I don't trust her. I don't trust. It's like, the truth is I should trust her, but I know like I, I can tell my, I'm, I'm like uh, talking to her on the phone. Uh, like, uh, cause my, cause OCD, it's like you, it's like, you think, I mean, I do a whole bit about how you, you know, you don't, you, I've never done anything, but I'm, but I'm, I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to do, so, I'm going to go to jail for something I didn't do. Okay. So right. until about a year ago. Two years ago, I thought there was a 50-50 chance I was the Golden State Killer. How do I know? <laughs> How do I know that I'm not a sleep murderer? I go sleep murdering like Verbiglia walks around. I sleep yeah. murder. How do I know? <laughs> and then I did a whole thing about how he started in Sacramento. I started in Sacramento. <laughs> he, he wasn't killing in the clubs. I was killing in – I wasn't killing in the clubs. But the point is, it's like <laughs> it's, it's – I don't even – it's like a type of thing like – I actually doesn't even matter if I can convince myself I haven't done a crime. It's that I'm right. going to be caught for it anyway. So it's like, oh, it's okay. a really, wow. yeah. So it's like that kind of a, uh, a, a painful, like I do this other joke, which is like, I say, you know, whenever they have a dateline, they say, uh, someone, if, if they've got stabbed like a hundred times, it's a crime of passion. How yeah. do they know it's not an OCD sufferer? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Which uh, now I have to start again. Seven, eight, <laughs> two, seven. Stab, stab. Right. <laughs> there's, there's twenty fingerprints on the doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> this guy seemed like he kept checking the lock. Why would the criminal <laughs> check to see if the lock was uh, was closed? Odd, <laughs> odd behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. weird because usually this woman leaves the stove on. <laughs> so. That's classic. <laughs> oh my god, guys, we've come up with so much good material for my act. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, have it. I will you give can you have it all. a release. You'll be getting a release. Oh, okay, please. <laughs> it's yours. You can have the elevator and the uh Oh, the, the elevator is gold. The you elevator the pitch. Elevator. Oh my god. Elevators aren't safe. <laughs> no, that that is solid, and I will. And not only that, I will. Uh, I've done this before. I send royalties to a lot of comics. Doesn't sound right. Oh, please. Doesn't sound. But I paid over th uh, three million dollars in royalties to people. Oh my god! Friends. <laughs> um, they call me Johnny Joke. Johnny Joke Seed. <laughs> joke Seed. Like apple seed. 
Yeah. <laughs> you go around the, 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 the country just giving checks to comics and then watch them grow. Yeah, here's one for you. Here's one for you. Hey. <laughs> you tell somebody, are uh, you done? Uh, what do you do for a living? Nothing. Then you tell them, how do you know when you're done? Boom. You can have yeah, that. Yeah. Take it home with and you. Then, and like, then keep the, the tag. Yeah. And, and in the... <laughs> In, uh, in the memo section of the check, you write, but you? And <laughs> <laughs> but you? I ha Oh, that reminds me. You know, uh, whenever it reminds me of a joke for my act, I think it's very important that I say this was a joke for my act and to formally introduce it and to take up time by performing it again. So I, I had this joke. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's 2020, but Mel Gibson is still writing, I hate the Jews on his checks. <laughs> Do you, guys like get it. the, I, do you guys get what the derivation oh, of the yeah. joke is? I get it. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, it's, a, it's 2020, but I'm still writing 2019 on my checks. Right, So right. I says, yeah. with humorous intent, I'm still writing. I hate the Jews. How have, was I not successful with this act? That's what I'm asking. Oh, I, I just wonder. I, I mean, it's not for me. I just feel the world missed it. I... <laughs> Well, thankfully, you're on the most popular podcast in the yeah. world. You're, you're, your uh, Mel Gibson joke's going to be heard all over the country. I have a feeling you guys, I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm often wrong. Like, if I like people, <laughs> if I like people, it's often a death knell for them. I, like, I might, like, oh I might, if, I like you guys so much. I think you guys are so talented. I would expect I could call either one of you back next week and you wouldn't be in your apartments. That's how much of an effect. <laughs> I have We're closed. Gonna... Five, com I, I've closed at least four or five comedy rooms in my career. Like the next week, they weren't there. Like uh, out of business? I'm not kidding. It was a couple of one nighters. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, don't take my endorsement of what you're doing as an insurance of success. But I would think a lot of people are gonna, uh, would love this show. And I bet they do love the show already. And why am I giving you a pep talk? I love it. No, well, we need we're it. Just, we're just as anxious as you are. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> You're talking to yourself at the same time as us. I know. I love. Yeah, do you tell people? Do you tell people to to download your podcast uh, at this that or or and at the end, it's very important that you say, "Oh, wherever it is that you like to get your podcasts, wherever That's what it we is. do too." Yeah, we do it. Because That's you can't judge people on where they get their podcasts from. It's very important. <laughs> Right. And do you know people yeah. who listen to podcasts, they love, they, they, they're very scared of the post office. I don't know what it is. They can't go to the really? post office, so they have to have a special service that handles their mail for them. Oh. Do you know people listen to the podcast? They, they, don't, they don't have time to hire their own people because they're listening to so many podcasts <laughs> that they have to hire a zip recruiter. <laughs> My yeah, jokes that's... about podcasts are so old, even you guys don't get them. I know. It's <laughs> but you're not stamps. old. Stamps.com. Stamps.com. Stamps. <laughs> yeah. Blue Apron. People Blue who listen to podcasts love to have food delivered to their house uncooked. <laughs> and may, make it themselves. Uncooked. Yeah, they love it. For some reason, they love it. I don't know why. We uh, Don't worry. We have no ads, so, so you won't yeah. hear any of those. We don't have any ads either. Yeah. We're, we're not successful. Ads. Yep, yeah, you're looking not, at. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're really? Well, how critter. could you guys dress? How could you dress so well? Are you kidding me? Look at you guys. <laughs> right. Yeah, sorry, we forgot our tux. <laughs> oh, hold on. There we go. Oh, <laughs> my God. Must be nice, guys. Must be nice. <laughs> there we go. Man. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. I, um, so you think, you would you say therapy is the only way you cope? with anxiety do you meditate or do you do yoga or anything like that or is it i've tried uh i have tried meditation but i don't you know i i would like to do it more because uh i think i need i think that's a definitely a good one in fact my therapist said to me something like i was talking to her about sometimes as it was a couple times i got so panicky that just to think about my breaths was bothering me you know like yes concentrate wow. your breathing yeah. <laughs> and then so so she said that she had read this thing or whatever but the guy said if you're really packy just try and like just notice things try to calm yourself down by just noticing things so you can go right that's a, that's a lamp over here here's a cup and so yeah, th that thing grounded. that thing really helps 
And for the for the what, what was happening to me in, until my mom and sister passed was I was I was obviously upset about it. So that was right. causing a lot of unacknowledged anxiety all the time. And then right. I would uh, I wouldn't be paying attention to what was happening. So like if I don't eat every hour, I get a little nauseous. So then if I'm mm-hmm. not eating, then I would start to think about that. And, right. and then that would get me more panicky. So it's just been right. – so I was actually – was kind of like thro- throwing up a little with a nervous stomach and uh, for about a year and a half. Not every day. I mean not every meal. Right. Not. not every conversation. But I, I had never had that happen to me before where I had to go you wow. know, behind the hedges. Uh, right. Wow. And, so, and then, uh, then you would see the pebble person you hit. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I threw up on someone I'd hit once in 1982 in my Ford Country <laughs> Squire wagon. It wasn't oh a, my per- a, per- a person or a car. I made this up. Had- I made it up. Whatever oh. it was, <laughs> I was making. You said something. I was yes ending you. Yes ending. Oh, you. I oh. know. I could, said- but you were so convincing. Yeah, really. Yes, I, yes, and I'm very good at this. Yes, and I'm good <laughs> off the top of my head. Yes, and <laughs> yes, and no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and maybe sometimes. Yes, and maybe not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh wow! Oh, so well, yeah, uh, I would like to do more th- um, more meditation. I would, uh, and uh, I do take. I my my I have a psychiatrist, mm-hmm. and I oh, have cool. a therapist. Okay, because my therapist doesn't prescribe medication, and yeah, I right. and my the the first session I saw her, she goes, "I believe you need medication," because wow, these things like why do you know? A lot of people have trouble with the illness model because it's like saying alcoholism is an illness or anything. Is illness. I don't have trouble with the illness model because it, it, it it's like, oh, yeah, you have this condition with however right. it was right. caused. So you can beat yourself up less about why you're doing it. Sometimes you're doing it right. because it's part of your thing. So that's really, really right. helped. It's just really, really helped me. But the first session, she was like, you you know, I think you should be on. And I was on Prozac. I got, I, and I kept taking more because I was like, I like this. Let's go to ah. 40. Let's go to 60. Let's go to 80. And at 80, oh, it just, started to not. So now I'm at 40 milligrams. That okay. was just that was just on your right. own or your psychiatrist told you to do that? No, no, no. Just So that's what the psychiatrist is for. So my oh. therapist sent me to a psychiatrist. And she okay. she prescribed me uh, they're, Prozac. They're like, I was all, already, I'm sorry, already taking Adderall. Adderall changed oh. my life. At age 50, I thought that I had a fake disease and I couldn't understand why I couldn't focus. And yeah. Adderall changed my life. I used to have like the most nervous stomach on airplanes I, and I couldn't figure out why. When I started taking Adderall, all of those things completely went away because wow. I didn't realize it was panic. It was all anxiety. Anxiety, anxiety. Wow. and a lot of people that. think, "What's that?" Yeah, I'm the Stephen same has that. Stephen has that fear of flying. Sickness, and some so. people don't don't respond to, but some people don't respond to stimulants. Like if you don't have those, if you don't have ADD, you won't respond as well sometimes. Right. To to uh, because people get surprised that I'm on Adderall. They go, well, "Doesn't that make you more nervous?" But it doesn't usually. No. Yeah, it settles. Yeah, you. I can see where people would think that, but like. It's all everybody's frequency that it's all different right. for everybody. Exactly. Man. Wow. Uh, yeah. I always think that the therapist psychiatrist is like the agent manager combination. Yeah. <laughs> they, they talk, right? And they, uh, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. They, they uh, do different things, but help you to the same goal. I, <laughs> uh, here's money. a joke. Here's a joke from 1993. Ooh. I have an agent, I have a manager, I have a lawyer, I have someone who for 2%, I call them up and they go, it's not you, Andy, this business is screwed. For 2%. <laughs> for 2%. I need that. It's well I worth it. Well worth it. <laughs> Man, that's, I'll t- that's timeless. You could do that bit now. I'll t- yeah, I'll take that person. Don't tempt me. I'll bring it back. <laughs> Please bring it back. What do you think Busted about my off. Y2K? My Y2K material. Should I bring that back again? <laughs> Just update What's it to Corona. What's up with this bicentennial? Is the bicentennial <laughs> current? <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, 
so usually we wrap up with uh, we have listeners that send in topics that, of things that made them anxious this week. Cool. And uh, I'll just read uh, the one that we have because of of uh, time. This one's kind of because I again dominant. I could God no. forbid I should listen to you guys. Uh, no, you guys, no, guys, no, this is okay, great. Okay, all right, okay. It'll you, only take uh, me two hours to get over this. <laughs> you uh, oh, trust me, you were. Wonderful. This is the you best guys ever. are wonderful. You guys are wonderful. Oh man. Oh come on. Stop well, it. Well, he does have you. You Stop do have it. three hours on your recorder. Don't tempt us. This is a reverse. <laughs> this is a reverse roast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a boast. <laughs> you guys are so funny, so great, so good. Oh, You're man. good people. I mean, oh, you, I. D- you just do hashtag you. T- hashtag you too for the right reasons. <laughs> for the right reasons. <laughs> I do have one question. I I remember I uh, I remember you mentioning once that you froze on Letterman. Is oh, that true. Oh. Did, was that what it, was that like with as someone with anxiety? It was so ang- okay. David Letterman doesn't like. He doesn't care, but he, right. he he doesn't prefer that you have cue cards. So you can have them, but I decided a long time ago. He doesn't like him. I'm gonna just and so and I have all of these uh, fears of my mind going blank and all these things. So I had memorized the set like you know Apple Sugar Cube. What's up with pizza? Those weren't the yeah. bits, but the, those the sound set, pretty funny. They sound the pretty list. funny. Uh, <laughs> so I want to hear those jokes. <laughs> I was supposed to go into the bit about Michelangelo. So I start to say. Michelangelo. I, you know, I just start to say it in my head, Michelangelo, Michelangelo. And I swear to God, it seemed like for it seemed like it went on for three or four minutes. And luckily, I was able to remember the joke. I was able to remember right. the actual joke. But it, oh my God. it's always one of my fears. And uh, it happened even it happened early on when I did stand up. It's like one of those anxiety things. I'm so afraid I'm gonna. It's like I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know what I'm afraid of half the time. But, but anyway, I, I, I remember where I was. And afterwards, one of the writers on the show, he's the only one who noticed. But I, he, goes, I guess I, he goes, definitely, you could tell if you're looking for it. You could tell I was like, wow. I was like this. I was like, <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I got a, lot of, got a lot of that going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up with you guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. That's one of those things that I think all performers have that. You know the dream about being naked or the fear of right. do you guys have perf- uh, any performance anxiety when you all the time yeah the bigger the stakes yeah. the more it is i feel like yeah and... i think the smaller the crowd the less the more nervous i am the bigger the crowd the the less nervous i'm the opposite it's, it's, it's... i love a oh, half yeah. a filled half a filled room that's all i need yeah I, I like half a filled room if if everyone's doing well and I'm doing well, or if everyone's doing bad and I'm also doing bad. That's, that's exactly how, right, no yeah. question. That's the other thing that's that therapy is is good for because you can realize it used to be because I my family was so judgmental, which was the source of comedy for my family. But we also everybody was good or bad depending on what they did. You know, you're either good. Or there were no gray areas in life. Yeah. You know, and Man. so uh, I don't know why I said that, but it had a point. I don't know what the hell it was. Well, I was talking about crowds. So, yeah, I guess I wasn't like, oh, they're just okay. I'm not. Right. Nervous. Yeah. I thought you were just leading into your sugar cube bit. Yeah. If I remember, <laughs> I'll, I will add it on to this recording here. And if you guys can work it in. Yeah. Sure. The rest of the show. <laughs> Let's uh, do it. Come yeah. on, fuck. guys. Guys, the podcast is going crazy now. What are we going to do? It's nuts. Oh, no. He's got his glasses on. Oh, <laughs> Folks, I'm wow. out of control. I, I can't oh, reach a God. lamp. <laughs> if I could reach a lamp, the shade would be off right now, and it would be on my head. <laughs> that's uh, that's, that's so what I do. One... That's, what, that's what I do when I don't want anyone to talk to me on the street. I put my glasses upside down. <laughs> <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually works. Um, Steven, what? Uh so we had one listener write in that uh, the thing that made them anxious this week is uh, they had a, to put out a fire at their apartment building. And the, the weird thing is during the fire, they felt no anxiety at all. But then the next day, they've had an- anxiety symptoms until present. Mm, yeah. 
That's a. Uh... Have you guys experienced anything like that? Yeah, it's like the cut. It's like you, you're in the moment, so you don't really think about how nervous you are, and then afterwards, you're like, "Oh my god, what what, what was that?" And then you feel anxious right. about not feeling anxious, and you feel you kind of relive the moment. I, I feel that. Yeah, I mean, I was once held up, and no, not held up. Yeah, I was. Oh my in god! A, I was working in a stereo store, and they came in and they tied us up. And they, uh, and, the, and they had guns, and they were speaking in, and they were speaking in, in Spanish, and I didn't really speak Spanish that well. And so, I, of course, because of my OCD, I was thinking, oh, they're deciding, should we kill them? Yes, we should. No, maybe we shouldn't kill them. Maybe oh you, you God. should kill them. No, but they, but they left. You know, they so they left us, and they, uh, and they left. And then the thing that was amazing about that experience was when the moment I thought I was going to die, I actually did get calm. So it did bring me. Weird, wow. and I am a cow ward. I am a put. I put the O in cow ward. Okay, I <laughs> scared. I've never been in a fight. I've I've shrunk from physical, and so I thought. Yeah, but for some reason, it just like so. In in that case, I I don't know that after it. I think after it, I probably was freaked out the next day, uh, but I didn't. I didn't. That was a time period in my life where I wouldn't acknowledge any things. Once I was over them, and that was a mistake. Right. You know, I was like, "Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm cool." My mom was cool. Most most moms don't uh, uh, understand what their kids are saying. Well, my anxiety is telling me like, "Oh, that that probably saved your life because if you were like freaking out on uh, tied up, they would have been maybe they would have done something. I don't know." Well, the, it just it just made me well. I, this is another thing I went through through in therapy was like, uh, I know we're over time, but there's another thing I went through in therapy was like. I felt as a kid I had to fight. I had to be a. Uh, I had to fight like a man, which I never could do because I was four eleven in high school and I could never right. fight. And my whole life I was scared of confrontation. And it wasn't until I had therapy when my therapist goes, "You know, you're not supposed to go around fighting." You know, it's like, uh, oh. and and the fact that I didn't feel like I actually felt like I was less of a man because. Because I literally had seen movies like Billy Jack or whatever. You know, it's like you see these movies yeah. and you think that's what a man does. And I completely overcame my fear of getting beaten up from that. Wow. Because I realized it is not, I'm not supposed to be, don't have to worry about this. I'm not going to escalate right. it. <laughs> right, <Yeah. laughs> right, 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 right. Wow. Oh, I'm crap. cured. You I'm just carrying... saying I'm cured. I'm cured, you guys. I mean, I, I can tell that people are green behind the therapeutic ear. But years from you... now, you'll thank me. You've been carrying that oh, fear of man. getting beaten up for, for that long? My... Yes, absolutely. Oh, I still have it. I have it. Well, this I was helpful. tortured by a kid, though, in school who said, I'll meet you every day at 3 o'clock, and I wouldn't meet him every day. So he would just, like, yell at me in front of the other kids and make, you know. Make me cry. Oh my god! Yeah. So I really had uh, issues with it. Wow. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I had kids like that. They, they're just mean. Yeah. I was shorter too. I was shorter at fourteen, so I feel like that makes you a target. I was four eleven yeah, until I got into high school. Now I'm. I'm of course now I'm five five and a half. So let's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, guys? Yeah. You're towering over <laughs> us. <laughs> you got the guns. I got the guns. Yeah. Really oh, do. man, this was so fun. Andy, thank you so much. Thank you, Wait, guys. This, this was wonderful. I was so nervous. I wasn't yeah. nervous, but I was. it was funny because it was about panicking. I, I I panicked. I didn't know. I forgot to look. I said to myself, you're a bad person, Andy. You're a bad person. You could have <laughs> glanced, but I'm a healthier person because I admitted it to you right at the Oh, top. we loved it. Yeah, we, we, were, we were sitting here like, oh, he's not going to come. You know, so we're just happy. Yeah, that's, that's, we're really happy he came. That would be me. Yeah, of course he's gonna forget. Uh, the whole time I was <laughs> yeah. like, "Is he gonna hate us?" <laughs> Very cool. Oh, this is great. I will send you my version. Oh, do you do you do a wrap up of the show? Should I should I stand by while you wrap it up? Oh, oh we, I'm we'll keep just, we're keeping this in. Well, <laughs> oh, okay. We can just pl plug your stuff. Uh, I know we, yeah, we got Thought Spiral. We got your new album. Hence the, the humor. humor. And. Um, and the thing that everyone should know who's in therapy is that I, this happens to me at the end of every therapy session. I always feel like I have to close the therapy session strong. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's no, no pressure at all. This is... But I, I actually told her that. It's like, I said, I gotta tell you, every week it's like, I was like, okay, so that's good. And uh, I'll see, and you know, I'll see you, where are you gonna be? What should I say about you? 
when you're leaving. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Jew- but that's a very Jewish thing too. About you're afraid of you know, will they will they be happy with how I say goodbye? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having oh me. God. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you for doing this. We're so glad you agreed to do it. We appreciate you you taking the time. You got yeah. it. Thanks do, for do listening it. to all of my tragedies. I didn't. Do, do, uh, you any, do, you, do you have any gigs that are currently on the books and not COVID canceled? No, but I promote? did find. Well, I'm supposed to be in the fall. I'm supposed to be at the festivals I missed in the summer are supposed to be rescheduled for the fall. So, like, oh, right. maybe Montreal, maybe uh, Toronto, and maybe Austin. But I got the first actual the club I was going to play at closed today. So that's a nice feeling. Oh, the comedy uh, loss. I don't know where the. I think it's in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's closed. Okay. It? Wow. There, Oh yeah, there's, that's funny because there is a comedy addict. So and then there's a comedy. I love mom. that club. That's a great club. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I went to sc- my parents went to school in, in Indiana University there in uh, Bloomington. Oh man, yeah. I'm oh, wow. supposed to be doing it in September. I'm doing you will love it. He is the greatest. He's the greatest club oh, owner, man. and you will love it. And the crowds are great. Oh and I, wow! And I watched one of your Letterman's, and they said you'll be performing at Morty's Comedy Joint, and I performed <laughs> like the. I performed the last week there. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that thing is done. That's they so bulldozed funny. that place. <laughs> I bombed. Oh, I bombed there too. Wow. <laughs> oh my god! I really bombed yeah, that, every that... show. Oh, oh god! <laughs> Andy, give yourself well, credit. Obviously, you did great here. Yeah, come so. on. I, I killed two, here. Two people. How do I gotta worry about you that killed crap here. for? Yeah, you killed here. Oh, oh, someone will send me an email about where to send it to, right? Or one of the emails. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So okay. We'll contact cool. your publicist. Yeah. No, no. It's okay, just great. Uh, you uh, just contact me. I'll, I'll send it right back to you. Yeah. Wh- well, how do we contact you? Oh man. <laughs> thank you so much, Andy. Okay, guys. Thank you so much, and I will do this. I'll o- upload it as soon as I have to upload it, and then it'll be about like fifteen minutes. But I'll send it to you. Nope, yeah, no, yeah. rush. We'll, we'll this comes out you. on Sunday, so we got plenty of time. Hooray. Thank you. This was really great. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, Andy. My heart starts beating really fast. And I get to it. I'm like sweating and trembling. Me too. I'm going to die? Yeah.